demons are not demons are not this embodied human spirit who died in the past but somehow wandering around in this realm, in this world, and sometimes appears in the gravesite or the haunted house, these dead people's soul, that's not demons. No, demons are wicked, evil, spiritual beings, the fallen angels. They are the angels or servants of the devil. So the devil is called, in the Bible, the prince of demons. Matthew 12, 24. The devil is the ruler of this world. John 12. The prince of the power of the air. Ephesians 2, 2. The god of this world. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Abaddon. Which means destroyer. The, demon, the devil is the deceiver. He's the father of lies. He's the ancient serpent. The great dragon. Brothers and sisters, I want you to understand this. He's not merely an influencer, influencing over this world and over sinners. But the Bible tells us that he is very powerful spiritual being who is very clever and who became intrinsically evil and destructive. He deceives. He's a ruler of the host of the lesser evil spirit calls demons. Now, these devil and demons, this is not a mythical story. You see, the, the devils and demons in the Bible, they're not on a vacation. They did not leave this world. They are at work in this world, in our lives. So do not count them out in your life as if none factors, have, as if your life has nothing to do with them. Demons can overpower a person and subdue a person to the degree what we call demon position. It is a dominant subjection of a person. Yet, even if it is not to that degree, demons can cause illness and afflictions on people. Demons can do that because these sinners are under the slavery, under their power and authority. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and take away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. This is the parable of Jesus of sowing a seed. And some seed fell on the pathway. What happened? They hear the word of God, but the devil come, take it away. The devil turned their attention to the worldly things, the things of the flesh, the fleshly desire, or they've been caught up with worries and so and so. It's like, oh, what if you does the word? Oh, oh, I want this. They paying attention to that so quickly they forget the gospel. They take it away. Or they may hear it, but they don't pay attention. They see here, they're just thinking about this and that, friend, school, other things. <sighs> so they didn't get it. They sacrificed to demons that there were no gods, to the gods they have never known. False religions. They are closely connected to demons and demonic activities. It's a deception. Can they deceive the people by disguising themselves as a dead people's spirit? As if this dead person's soul is back here like a ghost and talking to the living? Yes, they can. They are powerful beings and the demons know the story of the dead people and they deceived people. Let me tell you what you need to know. Something you did not know. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Come talk to me. If they can turn the people away from the true God, from the truth of God. These false lying spirits.
when you consider all these things, you see what we sinners needed was not just some advice in this Christianity, not some tips, not a guideline how to have a better life, how to make yourself better. No, what we needed was a Savior who come and deliver us from the grip of the devil as a divine warrior. Our text is very short, but it is making a very powerful proclamation of the gospel truth. He says, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. That's the good news. Christ defeated the devil in the wilderness after 40 days of fasting through his obedience and trusting the Father. And ultimately, Christ destroyed the devil's one of his greatest weapons against you and me, against God's people. The accusation through his death on the cross, on your place. And the reason Christ stands now justified and as our justifier and silence the mouth of the accuser, then none of the accusation can stand against you. He wiped them out. Some people ask, can Christian be demon possessed? Can Christian be demon possessed? Who has authority over us? We are transferred into the light kingdom of light. Then are we left to ourselves? Are we alone? No. Who dwells in us? Constantly and permanently. You answer? The Holy Spirit. Not evil spirit. The Holy Spirit who is God dwells in us. And He has sealed us to redemption. And He made us the temple of God. This is your identity and the unchanging reality. Then how can the evil spirit claim you, possess you, when the Holy Spirit dwells in you? Yeah. Our assurance of is this. That we saw that from the book of Job. That all the activities of the demons, and including their prince of demons, the Satan, all their activities can only be done under our Father's permission. Whose permission? You and my, our Father. The devil is not omnipotent. The devil is not almighty. The devil is not. He does not know everything. He does not know your inner thoughts. The devil is not omnipresent. He's not everywhere. devil is not God. He's a finite creature. He may be much more powerful than us, but he's infinitely inferior to our God. And he can only work and operate within the boundaries and under the sovereign rule of your Father. Your father who loves you and cares for you. So he sent his son in order to destroy the works of the devil against you. Wouldn't he protect us? Here the full weight of the Bible's assurance as far as a believer is concerned. 1 John 5.18 says this, He was born of God, protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. The devil whisper promise. If you do this, this is going to fulfill you. This is going to satisfy you. This is going to make you happy. As if he's all for you. As if he cares you so much. And the devil is trying to persuade you how technically this is not that bad. Everybody does this. Most of the people do this. And there won't be any consequences. And it won't hurt anybody. It's not going to go bad. Hiding those consequences from our eyes. 
and deceives us by offering us false hope and false promise. Do it. Just go. Take it. Say it. Don't hold it back. What do you want to say? Say it. You should take what belongs to you. You could. You should claim your right. You should show who's the boss here. You shouldn't wait. You shouldn't be patient. You are the most important person. You feel like it, then you do it. He sounds like he's for you. On your side, during the temptation. But once you commit it, he changes position 180 degrees. How terrible that was. How horrible person you are. And not only at the time, over the weeks and months and years, the person regrets, what have I done? Whatever sin that may be, the person will realize after committing a sin that it did not fulfill the expectation or the promise. That your soul is feels so dried, so tired, empty, guilt, nothing but regrets. And at that moment, the devil is not silent. Brother, sisters, you know what? Sometimes he doesn't do that accusation right away. He remains strangely silent. Even after you commit a sin. Why? Because he wants you to be addicted to it. And go into it. It's not that bad. Go into it. And you become more vulnerable to that sin. Until you sunk deep into that sin. He's silent. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Why? Your adversary, the devil, pulls around like a roaring lion. Seeking someone to devour. Shooting all kinds of darts of deception and lies of this world. That you may think like the world, believe like the world, act like the world. And devil is seeking every opportunity to cause you to sin. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. And try to deceive you as if God is no longer for you. You know what you have done. As if what Christ has done, the work of Christ is not enough. Christ cannot change you. Christ cannot save you. As if the gospel is irrelevant. He wants you to believe that. Don't be deceived. But take heart, church. Know the word of God. God's truth is our sword against devil's lies. God's truth. That God will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. As you and I, as we pray, God, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. The devil may be powerful, but now we can, in Christ Jesus, we can resist the devil. Yes, you can resist the devil. James 4, 7, summon yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee 